morning. Here I am at in Horton in Ribblesdale in Yorkshire Dales, ready to embark on the Yorkshire Free Peaks. So Penny Ghent is behind me, the first peak. And I'm speaking really quietly because it's really early in the morning, half past five in the morning. Um, so yeah, about to get on the way. Bags packed, ready to go and ready for a day ahead. So this is the traditional start of the walk, uh, the Penny Ghent Cafe. Uh, anyone who's doing a walk from Horton will probably start and end uh, that, that time from this point. So we're well on the way now. Um, we've been for about, about 20 minutes, half an hour. Uh, we've left Horton behind, it's in a dip now. We're out in the country. Um, this is kind of the first time on the walk, the view starts to open up and you can actually see all the three peaks. So looming large in front of me, there is our first target of the day, Penny Ghent. Um, and then over this side, you can see one side. Uh, it's that one over uh, there. Whoop. There, and then Ingleborough also is just in the distance as well. Ingleborough and Wernside. So yeah, it's a it's a beautiful morning as well, you know. So you get views all around, not just here, but you can see all the way over to Pendle Hills, one Lancashire. So if you start opening up, you know, it starts to become quite a nice walk. Uh, but yeah, I'm going on to the next target of uh, Penny Ghent. Shall see you on the way up. So here I am, I've been climbing steadily through uh, along the path from Horton for the last 45 minutes to an hour. It's been quite a climb, um, but I'm actually now at the foot of the, the ascent to Penny Ghent proper. Um, this bit, it's, it's really fun, you know, it's, it's one of the most fun and exhilarating parts of the route. Probably like, along with the ascent to Ingleborough, one of the most technically challenging. Uh, it's, not, it's not difficult by any means, um, but it's a bit rocky. There's a couple of bits where it does feel a bit exposed. You're never in any danger, but it just feels like you, you're sort of like on the, on the edge of a mountain, which, which technically you actually are. Um, but it's well within the capability, you know. Sometimes you might want to go up and just use your hands to steady yourself a little bit on the way up, but it's absolutely fine. Um, so yeah, I'll see you at the top. Here I am, top of Penny Ghent, first peak completed. Uh, so it took me probably just over an hour to get here uh, from Horton, and it's amazing how much the views change. You know, I can see for miles all the way into like, Pendle Hill, Lancashire, Nidderdale. Um, can't quite see the Lake District at the moment, but the views are absolutely spectacular. So Penny Ghent, 694 metres, it's the smallest of the three peaks, um, but it's also one of the most accessible as well. You know, from Horton it's not much of a, of a journey at all. Um, but yeah, it's, 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 it's still a mountain, technically. Uh, it's not actually the, the third highest peak in the Dales, as a lot of people think. There's, I think there are about half a dozen other ones um, between it and, and Ingleborough, which is the second highest. 
Um, but even so, it's a tough challenge. Um, so from here, it's quite a long walk to, to Wernside. So we're going to head up, head down on the path into the valley. It's probably going to take us quite a while to get there. Uh, but yeah, I'll see, I'll see you at Wernside. So I've picked this moment to stop. Um, I'm actually on my way down. I've just, just come down Pennigent uh, in, in the valley below. And I think it's an ideal place to stop really and just, just take, take stock of where you are and, and repack your bag for the next stage of the journey. So there's an absolutely massive walk now from here uh, to, to Wernside over, over there. Um, it's probably quite a few miles. It's going to take an hour or two to get there. And it's really good. You've, you kind of, you've left a horse on you. You're very excited. You got to the top, really excited, come down again. Now's the time really to sort of like start recharging, replenishing and starting to think about the bigger challenge. Um, so this is where I kind of stuff some snacks into my pocket, make sure I've got some hydration close to hand because I'll be hydrating constantly on this little bit. And you can just recharge in your body. So in terms of snacks, I've got some carbs now. So it's a perfect time to take on some carbs because um, you've got quite a big break now until the, until the next peak. It's a long walk and you know, it's still going to be tiring, but well, let's get that energy built up now and ready. Uh, also get stuff close to hand as well. You know, you leave the car, you just stuff everything in your bag and off you go. Um, now's the time to think about what you're going to need for the next stage of the journey. So yeah, so take, take stock now, have a five minute break uh, and, get, and get carved up. So I'm here at last at Ribblehead. Uh, it's taken me probably about four hours to get here uh, from leaving Horton, 18 kilometers. You know, it's a real trek, that bit between Penny Ghent uh, and here, but, but here I am. I'm at the foot of Wernside, uh, the lovely and epic Ribblehead viaduct uh, built, built in the Victorian era. Uh, absolute feat, marvel of engineering. You know, the, this, this used to be a whole village here dedicated to the, the workers that built the viaduct. Uh, it, it, took, it took years to complete. Um, part of the Settle to Carlisle Railway is still in use today as well. Um, but yeah, absolutely spectacular feat of engineering, as are the further viaducts further in the Dent Valley as well. So yeah, so ready now to tackle Wernside, second peak of the three, uh, which is right behind me. This is the highest. Um, it's quite a gradual ascent up here, uh, but, but it can be quite punishing. You know, we've just walked last sort of probably about, about 14 kilometres in the valley. It's been quite flat, it's quite easy going, and it's a real shock to the legs now. When you, when you kind of hit that that incline so so yeah i'm already hydrated carved up ready to go see you at the top
So here I am at the summit of Wernside, well, te technically I'm a few metres off the summit, uh, it's quite busy up there so I just took an opportunity here to record the video and what a view, you can see all the way out to the, the Irish Sea behind me, the Lake District, uh, the Howgills over there and on the other side, Penny Ghent all of a sudden seems a long 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 way away, <laughs> because it actually is to be fair. Uh, and then Ingleborough, my next target, is looming large behind me. Um, but but yeah, it's it's an incredible vantage point. And it's really good. So I've never been up here. Interestingly, when it's actually been this clear, uh, usually it's enveloped in cloud. Um, but but what, that climb was absolutely brutal. You know, you kind of, I kind of forget just how brutal it actually is. You know, it's it's a long way since since I since got to Ribblehead. You kind of have to come behind Wernside, come up the shoulder, and then walk along the shoulder. Um, and this this top is not too bad, but actually climbing out of the valley and onto it, it's, it's net. Penny Ghent and, and Ingleborough are both quite steep climbs, um, but they're quite short as well. Whereas this one, it, it goes on for a long, long time. Uh, and obviously, there's some some bits aren't quite so bad, but a lot of it is is that kind of ascent where it, it's just a bit more than what's comfortable. Uh, it works you really hard. Um, and under normal conditions, it's, it's a tough one. But on a day like today, where it's, it's sweltering um, and with, with 18 kilometres and the peak already in the bag, it is quite hard work. Um, mercifully, one of the good things about Wernside is it's, it's a ridge um, and it gets quite a nice little breeze, uh, which is obviously a nightmare in winter. Uh, but on a day like today, where it was absolutely dead still and really exposed to the sun in the valley, it's really welcome to get that breeze up here. So, so yes, this is the highest of the three peaks, 736 metres. Um, I'm not sure the exact distance I've covered so far, probably about 25k. Um, so, so well over halfway, second peak in the bag, one more to go. Uh, I honestly think, you know, Ing is tough because it's the last one you're, you're absolutely drained. Um, Penny against, I think, is fairly easy because you're running, you're running on adrenaline and excitement. Uh, but this is one that can, can, it can kind of break you a little bit. You know, it's the one that really pushes you. It, it kind of it saps your energy on the way up. Um, but it feels so good to have reached the top. And just enjoy this view, you know, absolutely spectacular. You know, I can see the real head viaduct there in the, in the valley, and I can see the other two viaducts there as well in the Dent Valley. It's, it's absolutely spectacular. Um, so, so yes, yeah, so I'm just going to visit the summit briefly, and then it's on towards Ingleborough. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to a nice, well, I say a nice little descent, it's actually quite a steep descent from the side as well, uh, which can test the knees a little bit. But once you're into that valley, you've got a little bit of recuperation before you take on Ingleborough. Uh, so, I'm looking forward to that, just having a bit of recharge and recover time. Um, yeah, so onwards and downwards. So we come to Ingleborough, looming large in the background behind me. So I've left one side far behind now, that's over there, uh, and crossed the valley to here. And this is actually a really enjoyable part of the walk actually, it's a really nice lush green valley. Um, there's a couple of there's some toilets and refreshment stops in, in near the campsite as well at the bottom. And it's beautiful scenery as well as like limestone pavement, you know, lots of wildlife. It's really, really nice, you know, when, when the weather comes in as well, we get some really beautiful cloud bursts out here as well. So. So yeah, absolutely enjoy this bit. Um, but use it to recharge, use it to replenish, get your carbs in, 
get your get your sugar in for this one as well uh, and keep hydrated so yeah swing up it's the last last bit of the challenge this is where the fatigue kicks in this is where your legs want to be somewhere else but they haven't really got the energy to get there um so, so yeah this is this is going to be a tough one so it comes in three parts really the first the first part is a walk across this moor here it, it gradually climbs up um, until you reach the bottom really of, of the of, of the ridge um, and then it's a path from there that kind of winds up the ridge it's very similar in technical um, sort of like makeup to, to what we did in Penny Ghent earlier um, so, so yeah but once that's out of the way we're there on the ridge line and the third part of this hence probably just just from that ridge line up to the summit which is a bit of a rocky path but actually once you get to there then it feels good you know you've got the most of the ascent out of the way and it's just you're almost sort of floating to the top of that point so so yeah this is the point where we need to dig deep prepare ourselves make sure everything's packed away make sure we're, we're hydrated make sure the energy reserves are there and then and let's do it Finally made it to the top of Ingleborough. That was that's pretty punishing actually. It was it was some climb, and um, probably not as brutal as a uh, as well inside to be honest. But because you're so tired, it really saps the energy out of you, and you haven't got anything left by the end. And every step was was a struggle getting up to the summit. But we're here now. That's the last big ascent of the day. You know, it feels quite good. It feels really good actually. But this is where you kind of get one to sort a uh, false sense of security. You know, you've still got a long way to go yet, back to Horton. Um, it's still, it's still quite a trek, um, but you know, in terms of the ascent, it's it's now over, and that's that's got to be a good thing. Um, so yes, this is Ingleborough, so 724 meters or three meters, depending on who you believe. Um, used to be a, used to be a, an Iron Age fort on top of here as well. A really good vantage point, obviously, across the across the surrounding area. You can see all the way out to the sea. Uh, one side behind me, uh, Penny Gents on the other side is out of view as well. So, so yeah, by the time you get here, well done. You know, you've, you've conquered the hard bits. Just steal yourself now for the last bit on the way back. So that's it, here we are, walk over. Uh, that was absolutely exhausting. <laughs> what a challenge. So four kilometers later, it's half past three in the afternoon now nearly. Um, so I, I, that was sort of some walk. I'm absolutely shattered. I'm off for a drink. See you soon.